everybody. Continuing with the, the first round of assignments for the students of MA English semester one, we are now moving into the second unit of the core paper 102. And uh, today we have Aditi Dave making the first of the presentation on the themes of Paradise Lost. I will invite uh, Aditi Dave to make her presentation, please. Yes, Aditi, you may start, please. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Today is my topic is Paradise Lost, book one, themes. It is written by John Milton. So in this slideshow, we will see introduction, then recap of the epic poem, then major themes, quotes, and conclusion. So let us begin with introduction. Paradise is a classical epic written by John Milton. Milton started writing Paradise Lost in 1858 and it completed in 1665. Paradise Lost published in 1667 in 10 books and republished in 1674 in 12 books. It is written in blank verse. Purpose of writing this epic is justify the ways of God to mankind. As we know, Milton uh, first invokes the Holy Spirit and uh, he says about justify the ways of God to mankind. What in me is dark, illumine, what is low, raise in support. That to the height of this eternal argument, I may assert eternal providence and just God to mankind. So the purpose of writing this epic is justify the ways of God to mankind. The hero of Paradise Lost is Satan. It is said by John Dryden that the hero of Paradise Lost is Satan. And uh, as we see, as we read the uh, uh, full Paradise Lost epic, then uh, uh, we can see that the hero is uh, Satan. It is based on biblical theme, means uh, the whole epic story is based on biblical theme. John Milton used Homeric simile in Paradise Lost. So recap of the epic poem. So in this pictures, uh, you will see first picture is uh, of uh, Adam and Eve. The second one is of God. The third is Lucifer. And uh, the fourth one is Fallen Angels. So let us see the recap of the poem. The poem opens with the lines of man's first disobedience and the fruit of that forbidden tree whose mortal test brought death into the world and all over Wu. We are not supposed to see the whole story of Paradise Lost, but we will just see the story of Paradise Lost, book one. At first, Milton invokes a holy muse and declares Adam and Eve's first act of disobedience towards God and the consequences that followed from it. Means as we know that Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit of the tree as per certain Lucifer's temptation and then they banished from heaven and even Satan tried to overthrow God's rule and banded together with other angels. They were defeated by God and cast out of heaven into hell. And they transformed into devils from angels. They built the capital in hell named Pandemonium. And uh, then we see the description of hell and all. So let us now see the major, major themes of the epic poem. In this theme, we'll see fall of man. Then man's disobedience, sin and innocence, hierarchy and order, disobedience and revolt, and then we'll see fate and free will. So let us begin with fall of man. As we seen in the story that Adam and Eve taste a forbidden fruit and they banished from heaven by God. That shows the fall of all mankind. 
not the fall of just Adam and Eve, but fall of all mankind. Now let us move on man's disobedience. The first words of Paradise Lost shows the man's disobedience to God. Here in the epic, Milton narrates the story of Adam and Eve's disobedience and explains how it happens Adam and Eve are the first human to disobey God and Satan is the first of all God's creation to disobey. His decision only from himself. He was not tempted by others like Adam and Eve tempted by uh, Satan, but Satan himself, uh, uh, Satan's rebel comes only from himself. He was not tempted by others. Then let us see sin and innocence. If we see critically, then uh, sin and innocence is at the opposite, right? But for Adam and Eve, it is closely connected to their ignorance. When Adam and Eve lose their innocence, and disobey God's instructions, they bring sin into the world. Once we have sinned, we can never be innocent again. And as we know that the story of Paradise Lost is based on biblical theme, as I say in introduction. As I said in introduction that uh, the story of Paradise Lost is based on biblical theme. So in Christian theology, we have the term original sin. So according to Christian theology, the sin is inherited by Adam in all human beings. The concept of original sin was established by the writings of Saint Augustine. Now, next theme is hierarchy and order. So you must have the question that what is hierarchy? Hierarchy is a system in which members of an organization or society are ranked according to relative states, status or authority. In Milton's 17th century view of cosmos, heaven exists above, earth below and hell is below that. Like that, when God creates earth, he sets Adam and Eve in rank above all of the animals. And the devils have totally cast away from God. So they are the lowest rank of all. So now let us see disobedience and revolt. In the first book of Paradise Lost, we come to know about Adam and Eve's disobedience and angels' disobedience. So that they transformed into devil and somehow the devils or Satan wants to revolt against God. So disobedience and revolt is uh, there in the themes of Paradise Lost. Now let us see free and fate and free will. If we see the first book of Paradise Lost, we come to know that it is all about the game of fate, that Adam and Eve disobeys God and they have to fall from heaven. And Adam and Eve are thankful to God for all he has given them, including free will. So at the end, they choose to honor and obey him. They have the feeling of redemption too. So it was the uh, game of fate. Otherwise, Adam and Eve, Eve are uh, both are very obedient. But it, it was just the game of fate. Let us see some quotes of Milton. Solitude sometime is best society. The mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell, a hell of heaven. Awake, arise or be forever fallen. There was some quotes. Finally, summing up the point, we can say that all these themes are very much appropriate and Milton described it fantastically. And by this epic, we get the moral that there are two moral paths that one can take after disobedience. First is downward path of increasing sin and degradation represented by Saturn and the road of redemption 
represented by adam and a so it was all about themes hope you get my point thank you so much thank you so much uh, aditi uh, just to uh, summarize what you have done uh, began with an introduction uh, to the text but it's lost you made a reference to how there are uh, undercurrents from the bible and particularly you have melton using the homeric similes you briefly made a recap of the poem especially focusing on the invocation wherein the subject of the epic is made very clear which is of course to justify the ways of god to man you also make a description of hell and then of course you come to the subject proper the major themes that we have in pedrai's lost among the themes that you deliberated we had the fall of man man and disobedience sin and innocence hierarchy and order disobedience and revolt fate and free will and finally of course you refer to some quotes of milton from the text and eventually you concluded your presentation with the underlying statement that there are two paths one of course is the downward path adopted by satan and of course the road to redemption so on the whole it was a very good presentation so congratulations aditi thank you so much sir you have put in a lot of effort one can see that and i thought that the pics were very good some of the images that you put up interest in how much of uh, study hours you have spent in doing that so it's a good effort uh, uh want to the sir we can we are not able to hear your voice yeah uh Kirti, is that am I audible? Aditi? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, uh, Kirti, I have also given uh, shared the rights with you. You could share your presentation. Yes, sir. Now my today's topic is character sketch of Saturn. Uh, just give me a second, Kirti. Uh, let me just introduce you. Uh, among the presentations today, we have Kirti Kuti giving us the second presentation of the day. Uh, she will be talking about uh, the character sketch of Saturn, I believe. Uh, so I would request and uh, invite her to make her presentation. Yes, Kirti, you can please start your presentation. Thank you, sir. Now my today's topic is character sketch of Saturn. The picture of hell. Introduction. The character sketch of Saturn is one of the greatest creation in English literature. The grand figure of Milton's ep classical ep Paradise Lost is a classical creation to make a poet and the poem famous and popular. It is about Saturn, who is a heavenly angel, but transferred from heaven to hell as hellly serpent. From his first and last role, my highly surprising and disaster. Satan dominates Paradise Lost from beginning to end of the poem. Several reader has uh, gone to extent and calling him a hero of the epic. 
and identified him with uh, the poet Milton himself. Whatever this might be, it is a true to say that Satan in the story of fall of man. In the first book of Paradise Laws, Satan turned and rolling in the pool of fire in hell. He has dared to fight against the most highest punishment that has been meted out to him is the torments of hell. He has been thrown over the battlement of heaven with his followers. Satan is the first major character in the poem family called Lucifer. He is a determined as a pole star. He is courageous as a lion and he is huge and sea monster. These qualities of Satan make him the great grand figure of Paradise Lost. He is a hero as well as but the chief character of Paradise Lost. There are some qualities of Saturn that makes him hero of the Paradise Lost. So let us discuss in detail. First, his grandeur and pride. The grandeur of Saturn in Paradise Lost is Milton's own creation. Milton gives him the hero of villain, but the look of the hero. Milton, of course, paints to point out Saturn's face, which once surpassed the sun in his splendor. His original beauty might have desert him, but what remains reflects the image of an undoubted heroic soul. In his first speech, he makes hollow but high fun of God's military power. He considered himself greater than God in individual strength. Even in the midst of all this suffering and hum humiliation, his brain is busy to evolving plans for other wars. His determination. Satan's unshaken determination for revenge is another foremost feature of his character, he, his position is totally shaken, but his determination remains unshaken. His determination is the main uh, inspiration for fallen angels by his firm determination. We admire that the firm determination of Saturn, which he never submit or yield. He makes his evil intention quite clear. He is prompted by undying hatred for God and a desire for revenge. Milton shows on the two sides of Satan's character. His courage. A hero is a man of action. Cause is the outstanding trait in Satan's character. God hurled him, him into the bottom lies pit and do uh, Sometimes he realized that he is helpless in the lack of liquid fire, but uh, on regaining consecration, he refuses in the helpless state. Builds above his next command, he thinks that uh, if the fallen angels is now doomed to live forever in the dark caves in hell. But Satan is determined to ex Execrated himself from that object situation, and with a word of courage, he removes their fears and gives them new hope. Then, with the mighty speech, he raises their dropping spirit and infuses courage and energy in them. Although he defeated, but not afraid to declare his war with the great enemy. Neither the power of God nor the pain of hell can defeat it. His courage, as we is really proved as a leader, as the guides others. His leadership. Three quick qualities of an ideal leader to make him an admirable commander. First, his oratory. Second, his politics. And third, his control. We see his rare oratory in his speech, 
speech is full of inspiration. We see his political sense by ability to set up a systematic ministry for fallen angels. This is a true quality of a great leader and heroic man. A real hero is one who not possess heroic quality, but also creates similar qualities in other. In Puritans, he is a vain leader, but in Renesa, he is a universal model of ideal leadership. Creative imagination. Satan is a great sinner of God and man, but on the Renaissance or artistic level of Milton's creative imagination, he is a truly grand even in book first, basically good hero. He only appears grand, but is not great and thus. No hero, but uh, product of heroic poetry. Conclusion. Summing up the picture, of Saturn, which Milton has painted in the first book of Paradise Lost, is a very unique and grand. There is no doubt that Milton has used his poetic and dramatic parts for Saturn's character, and we have seen Saturn in not only rebel and tyrant, but he has heroic qualities also. As we have seen, he is brave, strong, and self-sacrificing. Thank you for listening to me. Yeah, thank you very much, Kirti. Uh, just to take you through what you just presented. Are you... Yeah. Hello there. Yes, sir. Yes. So uh, I was mentioning that Kirti took us through the character sketch of Satan. She began with a picture of hell uh, and then made a very specific mention that Satan is one of the greatest creations that we have in world literature. He's both a hero and a villain. Uh, the sudden images that you have some similes of satan uh, that we have gone through as a sea beast a monster and then you took us through the uh, qualities the outstanding qualities of satan uh, he has grandeur and pride the determination of satan his courage uh, you referred that he kind of action and uh, you also focused on his leadership qualities the quality of oratory, politics and control, uh, and creative imagination. And finally, of course, you summed up uh, the entire character sketch of Satan, uh, you know, reflecting and, uh, uh, you know, all those qualities. So thank you very much, Kirti. I thought that, uh, you know, this was a much improved performance. Uh, you were very conscious of your pronunciation. I feel that there is this is one level up uh, that you have uh, gone up. So congratulations, Kirti, for your presentation. I think both Aditi and uh, Kirti were outstanding. Uh, we can take uh, the responses from both uh, Kajal and uh, Kajal Bhutia and Kajal uh, Gadhir. They are with us. Uh, yes, uh, Kajal Bhutia, would you like to share your thoughts? We'll begin with Kajal. Yes, sir. Yes, Kajal, please do share your thoughts. Sir, uh, I think uh, that was a better to Much previous. Better. Right, right. Very good. Excellent. Yes, Kajal Gadhir, what do you have to say? This presentation is uh, very beautiful. Good. It's beautiful. Very good. Aditi and Kirti, you could share your thoughts on each other's presentation. Uh, maybe we'll start with Kirti on Aditi and then Aditi on Kirti. Yes, Kirti. No, sir, I don't want to say about it because she done very well. Okay, okay. 
And Aditi, do you have anything to say or respond to Kiti's presentation? Yes, sir. As uh, all said that uh, uh, her pronoun, uh, her uh, presentation was good, and uh, I like uh, her uh, pronunciation. Uh, her her uh, pronunciations are very very much good. Great, great, very good. Okay, so we'll close the session today.